So in the series of learning programming in C, we are discussing 2D arrays in C. In the previous video, I have discussed a need of 2D array, means why 2D array and declaration of 2D array. Now in this video, I will talk about initialization of 2D array. Two types of initialization at runtime and at compile time. Both you will see with the help of some examples, right? So now back to the topic, initialization at runtime and at compile time. First we will discuss at compile time, how to initialize. 2D array at compile time, right? Syntax is almost similar to initialization of a 1D array, right? A little bit different. So now see, at compile time means at the time of declaration only you will give the values. So how to declare a 2D array? Data type, the name of the array, size, first of all row size, uh, suppose I am taking 2 and then column size, 3 columns and 2 rows I want. Now here only in these braces give the values, right? Uh, suppose I am uh, giving here values what uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, right? So see general syntax if you write then what, what would be the syntax? Data type, name of array, in first bracket row size, second bra uh, bracket column size equal to in these braces you can you will write list of values values or you can say values you want to give that is the general syntax i hope no need to write that syntax, that syntax here so now see how many elements total elements would be there in this 2d array how to calculate row, row size into column size that, that is 3 into uh, 2 6 6 elements total element would be 6 here right how many bytes would be allocated 6 into for 1 4 bytes integer will take 4 bytes so 24 bytes would be allocated here. Now I have given value something like this. Now how to visualize this 2D array, how we see that data would be stored in memory. See here like this, so this is it, two rows, it's row 1 and row, sorry row 0 and 1, index would be started from 0, column would be 0, 1, 2 from 0 to 2, 3 columns are there in every row. So you can say it's a 2D array which is array of 1D arrays. This is what 1 uh, 1D array, this is 1 1D array, right? That's it. So now how this data would be initialized here? First of all, in first row data would be initialized, data would be written like first of all this one 0 in this first row, then again 0, again 0. Once we have filled all the columns, then 1, then 1, then 1. This is how data is to be initialized, right? So like this you can give. Second alternative is, is what? Better to give something like this. Because we know first one is, this is first row. So what you can do? These three, you can put again in this braces, right? The, this is you can say first row and for second row again you can put one more braces and 1 comma 1 comma 1 and that is it. Within these braces this is one row and this is second row. This is I guess more understandable. So you can say this is row 0 and row 1 index would be 0 and 1. right? So directly now we know that by, by looking at this point we know this is one row, 0, 0, 0 would be initialized here and this is second row. So this is also correct, you can write something like this. Or you can write something like this, int a and 2, 3 in a matrix form in the this 0, 0, 0, comma 1, 1, 1 and semicolon. This is also correct. In the next line you can write this. For the row 1, in next line you can write for row 2 and here you can close this, this, this braces. So this is also correct, you can initialize it in matrix form. This also would be initialized, this also would be uh, in memory would be uh, like uh, how we see that would be written something like this in 2D array. This is first row, this is second row, right. Now another method is how you can initialize, here what you can do, here you can you know skip this one. If you do not give the size the row size, then also if you give value something like this in braces, like this is for first row, this is for second row, 
right you want two rows but you don't initialize here you don't give the size here that is fine it will not give any error because you are initializing here so 0 0 0 that would be stored here 1 1 1 that would be stored in row 2 ultimately by default what two rows would be there and obviously column size you have declared here so i guess you got that the initialization is done row by row right row by row from here first row then second row only right so now when you can when it is not compulsory to give the size of this, this row size when you have given you have initialized all the values explicitly in 2d array then it's not compulsory to give row size means here see what you want you know the size of row would be 2 so 2 rows and 3 columns and you have initialized you have given all the 6 values here all the 6 values here in that case no need to give this row size if you write something like this and here also if you don't write this that is also fine it will work because you have initialized all the 6 values right but if you write something like this see I am writing here int a I am not giving any size 3 and uh, I am just writing here 0 ok first of all let me uh, you know give you another example if you write 2 and 3 and 1 0 only in that case what will happen all the values would be initialized with 0 right or before that one more thing if I write something like this 0 0 and uh, 0 and 1 or you can say 0 0 1 1 only 4 values I have given and sizes 2 and 3 so now how that would be initialized initialization would be done row by row so first value 0 second 0 next 1 also here now first row is complete now 1 is there and remaining would be initialized with by default 0 this is how the initialization to be initialization is to be done but if you want that 0 0 would be in first row 1 1 would be in second row then you have to specify explicitly that this is row 1 uh, row 0 I mean first row this is second row so what you can do you can put just curly braces here and here and then in curly braces 1 and 1 now whatever you have written within these curly braces either one value or two value that would be considered as row 1 means here this row 0 row 0 row and this would be considered as 1 row. so now initialization would be done something like this 0 0 would be here and by default there is no nothing so one more 0 by default and this is row second so 1 1 here and by default here would be 0 right so this is how we can do different different types of initialization now what what uh, I want to tell you one more thing uh, see and I have told you if 0 is there then all would be 0 first is 0 remaining would be 0 right but if you will not initialize size here then what will happen now it will not give any error see it will not give any error but you know here initialization is what because we, you have given only one zero how the size is to be calculated so when it will initialize like we know three columns would be there so zero 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 one zero by default two zero now we don't know second row is there or not right so that would be only one row there would be no second row so it's like one d array only this 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 and if you print if you write down the logic to print a 2d array like from uh, that that we will discuss here and if you will you want to print this second row also then it will give any garbage value because you haven't initialized this thing right so better to if you note don't give this size here and if you initialize something like this this is assignment for you see if I write here like this 1 1 1 and that's it 
Now, how data is to be initialized here? Right, in this form, 2D array. It would be 2D array or 1D array, right? And if you write second is what? If you write here 1, 1, 1 and 2, then these are the two uh, example, I mean uh, two assignments for, for you, you have to tell me in comment box, right? How data is to be initialized in these two cases, right? Now, uh, next point about initialization at compile time is what? If you write here something like this, uh, size is 2 and if I write here like 0, 0, 0 you have put this this one in three values into into these curly braces so that would be considered as this row first row so zero zero would be assigned here now next three rows would be assigned with what i mean a next row next row that one one row would be assigned with zero 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 remaining would be zero 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 right so you can try this this type of declaration all the declaration that i have told you on your laptop and you can you know see if you are getting any error or not now, second is what at runtime how you will initialize? How you can initialize a 1D array at runtime using for loop and scanf? Same here, we will use for loop and scanf function. But here two for loop, but here because we are having here what? Like suppose I am taking same int a, 2 and 3, right? So this is row 0, index is 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, right? Now, how to initialize this thing? So, first one, you have to take here two loops, nested loop would be required. And this thing I have discussed, why nested loop when we are discussing printing pattern programs in C. So, there we have discussed, uh, I have uploaded one video like what is need of nested loops and what are nested loops. You can first of all watch that video then come to here, this video. I will put the link of that video in the side button, you can check it out. So, now first loop would be to print what? Rows. Right. So, rows are 1 and 2, 2 rows only. So, I would be from 0 to 1 because the index is starting from 0 to 1 and I plus plus. Now, within this loop, the second loop would be J and that is responsible to print these values. So, within every row, we have we are having 3 values. So, that this loop would be would run for 3, three times 0 less than 3 and j plus plus so this is for to print row like two rows are there so 0 to 1 0 to uh, no 0 to 2 sorry right and here this is for printing these columns so 0 to 3 size is 3 and within this we are going to take input so printf percentage d address of name of array is a and here you will give two subscript because this is what 0 0 right this block is what row is 0 column is 1 0 2 1 0 1 1 1 2 so i and j you will have to give two values row value also and column value also then only then only it is no uh, possible to access these blocks or these cells and that's it this is what you can initialize at runtime right so at first i value is 0 condition true enter here then j value is 0 condition true enter here scan f percentage the address of a of i value 0 j value 0 address of a of 0 0 0 0 means this one so whatever you will give that would be assigned to this block like i am giving one now first of all j plus plus because we are in this inner loop now j plus plus j becomes one Condition true, enter here. Again, now A of I, I is 0 still, but J is 1. So, now I, 0, 1. This cell you can access. So, now whatever you will print, uh, you will enter, that value would be stored here. Because we are getting address of this cell. So, suppose I am entering 1 again. So, 1 would be stored here. Again, we are sub still into in this inner loop. So, J plus plus, that is 2. Again, condition true, enter address of a of i is still 0 but j is 2 0 2 0 2 this cell so whatever you will enter that would be stored here that is suppose i am entering 2 right now j plus plus j becomes 3 now condition true 3 less than 3 no exit from the inner loop but still we are in outer loop that is i plus plus now i becomes 1 
condition true again enter here again j would be initialized with 0 and same j would be repeated 3 times for this row right and once i value becomes then 2 condition not true exit from the loop and this is how we will initialize at runtime this is how this is working of nested loops right so now i hope you are clear with the runtime and compile time initialization of 2d array so in the next video we will discuss what uh, memory repre representation of 2D array as well as how to access elements of 2D array and, th and that in that video only I will show you all the things like on my laptop practically we will take one example and practically I will see I will show you the declaration part and initialization part as well as how to print an array and how to take this this uh, how to take values or how to initialize array at runtime, right. So now I will see you in the next video till then bye bye take care.